Terminator 2 machine I, I have, the DMD has just died. Um, I have actually tested another DMD uh, that I know is working and it works fine. So clearly it's the board or the cables getting to it. So I thought I'd start off by um, taking you through how to check the voltage on the DMD. Now, effectively, the ribbon cable comes in from the board and then the power comes in from the board from I believe it's J601 um, on the dot matrix controller board down to uh, the back of your DMD. So one thing to note is this is high voltage. This voltage can kill you. So do so at your own risk and be very careful what you're doing. So when we start looking at the plug um, at the back, you've got pin number one um, through to pin number eight on the back of this with three being no, pin number three being a key, so nothing, no wire on there. But you can see that pin number four and five, and you can look at this in the manual, are ground. First thing I'm going to do is uh, check the continuity of the the grounded uh, pins back to the to ground. So I'm just going to connect one end of my multimeter. I've got a little hook on this one. Connect that to the braid that runs around. Um, put the multimeter on continuity, and when there's continuity, it's going to beep. Check that that's connected by clicking on anything that's grounded. Another piece of braid. And then go and check the continuity again. The machine is off um, on pin number four, pin number five, and that indicates if that um, those pins are grounded, which then means when I can go back and check the voltages, I don't need to fiddle around putting negative wire on each on the one of those pins. I can just keep that on the on the the ground braid and then measure the voltage. So then. Now what I can do is flip this down to voltage, turn the game on, and now let's hopefully I, I don't get electrocuted. Let's get a good contact. 116 volts. Now ideally you want to get 12 volts less than that. So we're getting 11 and a half, close to 12 volts difference. That's a bit of contact. 117 and a half. And 105 and a half, which is 12 difference. Pin three is nothing. That is your, your key. Pin four and five is your ground. And then you've got a series of lower voltage to lower voltage wires, the first one is 5 on pin 6, pin 7 is 12 volts, and then the last one should be 62 volts. And here you can see is the problem, you've basically got 143 millivolts, basically it's, it's reading very low. So there's clearly a problem with this board, um, and we're going to take the board out. Okay, so... Um, after doing the tests of the dot matrix controller board and if evaluating that the um, board needs to be built because the 62 volt cathode surface circuit is, um, is out, um, decided to go ahead and just rebuild the whole board rather than just the piece of the board that was required for the 62 volt circuit. So I've highlighted the components that are generally recommended for changing for the 62 volt circuit which is effectively resistors 3, 12, 11, uh, C4 for the capacitor C4 um, and then transistors Q3, Q2, Q10, um, diode D3, capacitor C6 and resistor R4 plus they recommend you test the bridge rectifier um, BR1 
So I'm gonna quickly test the bridge rectifier. That's an easy thing to test. And then I've managed to source the components for all the other parts of the high voltage section of the board, um, which are highlighted here in pink. If you're looking at the board, the positive is marked here with the little white dot on for the direct current positive, direct current negative, and then the two alternating current. Um, so the first thing to do is to set the multimeter to diode and then set the black lead to the positive leg and then if touch into the with the red lead touch each of the current legs on the other side and then take it the other way around and on the negative lead you go and touch the, with, the, with the red wire and then touch each of the um, and so long as your readings on each are between 0.5 and 0.7 volts your bridge rectifier is good so that bridge rectifier is good so we don't need to replace that so we're just going to kick in and replace all the other parts that are recommended so here are the, the components that I'm looking to change um, just again just being organized is, is good so printed out the uh, manual circuit board diagram um, in A3 uh, sort of large format highlighted those that I'm going to remove for the 63, 62 volt um, cathode circuit you only need to really change the yellow highlighted components potentially or check them um, I'm going to go and change the lot for the whole high voltage section um, which are the extra ones are highlighted in pink and um, we'll go from there so let's start by desoldering components so let's start with the big components first let's try and get these capacitors out already out. There we go. There we go. Two capacitors gone. That's quick. Um, and then we're just going to simply go through work our way through the list. We're going to work our way through these four resistors next. Start by desoldering from this side. Let's try to remove transistors with the heat sinks. So we're going to need to remove the heat, sink, heat sinks first, um, but let's desolder the legs on each of these first, um, and then can get involved with the heat sinks. So just being careful to make sure you get the right pieces. Just in front of the legs, you've got. Let's see what we can do with those heatsink legs. Get a pair of pliers. So you'll see each of these legs has got a small. If you can fold them in for the heatsinks. 
and hopefully so we're just going to release each of those tricky to get these heat sink legs up and I think there we go Maybe fine. There we go. So you push the center one, which is the one closest to the pin. That makes it looks like it's a lot easier to get that out. This one seems a bit tight, so try another go. Seems a little looser now. There we go. Q3, Q7, Q6 are all gone. Okay, so I'm now going to remove the other large resistor here. So I'm struggling to get that one out. So what I'm going to actually do is, this might sound counterproductive, but I'm actually going to pop a little bit more solder on. And then go and try to desolder again. straight away it pops out so if you're struggling on some of these bits and bobs you know, don't be shy to add a little bit of solar that's that there's the board with all the high voltage components removed and um, I'm going to give that a bit of a clean now with some alcohol methylated spirits and an old toothbrush on the front and the back um, and then check any of the holes to make sure that um, I haven't damaged any of the pads and then start getting the components back in. So, so literally I've got an old brush with some, some alcohol. I'll just give it a bit of a, a clean. There's, there's quite a lot of gunk underneath there. And just wipe it off with a clean cloth. Let me get most of it off. That's the front of the board. You're never going to get the burnt damage off, but it's looking a little bit better and cleaner. And then we're going to do the same for the back. So 
So you can see now the board is actually cleaned up not too badly. Um, looks like all of the component, the uh, all of the little traces seem okay. And um, I'm going to work to go with that. The first thing we've got to do though is to remove these heat sinks from these transistors um, because we need to reuse those. But other than that, we've now got a, a bunch of gunky old parts that we've taken off that are, you know, 25 plus years old, um, close to 30 years old, in fact. Um, so we'll replace those with all these now nice new new parts. But let's get these these off here and um, for that we just need a screwdriver hopefully we don't need to uh, we're gonna need to yeah, actually once you've loosened it it's pretty simple to just screw that off that comes out Again, I'm just going to put that in there for now. There you go. So that's the only bits that you actually need to keep. Those are the old bits. We're going to keep the heat sinks and those are going in the bin. So that's it for uh, this episode. I taken all the pieces off. The next episode will be uh, me reinstalling all the components. If you like it, subscribe it to stay in touch. You can leave a comment below if you've got any questions, happy to help. Until next time.